Hi guys, it's Andy from Nesmo Tech UK. Today we're doing an install into the Shuttle XPC Barebone SZ87R6. Okay, so let's get started with the build into the Shuttle unit. So what I'm going to do is just pull off the case. I've already removed the thumb screws just to make this part a little bit easier. So... The next thing that we're going to do is just go in and remove this hard drive cage area just to make installation of the RAM and also the CPU a little bit easier. Pull that out, stick that to the back. The next thing that we're going to do is go in and remove the fan. So it's just a case of lifting that up. Oh, come on and away from the actual heat sink and disconnecting the fan itself from the actual motherboard again popping that to one side now as you can hopefully see we've got this sort of um i can't remember what they call it now the sort of push twist mechanism here and all that you need to do is just twist them give them a pull and then that releases the actual pins themselves so we'll just go along and do that to them all just pop it down to one side. And then once you've done that, you just lift them out. And then you can pull the ice system out. We'll have a, a quick look at this actually. So you can see we've also got a nice copper base on the bottom here. Uh, with these four copper heat pipes that run up to this heat sink here. Um, you've actually got um, some sort of foam on there. I'm not quite sure as to what that's there for. Um, but that is essentially what's going to be cooling your Haswell processor, I'll see, along with the fan on top. So we'll just stick that down to one side, making sure that we don't damage the actual bottom of that. And then you can see that we've actually got a protective cover that is over the socket 1150 CPU socket there. So we're just going to go in and remove that now. It's a case of just peeling that off. Okay, so next comes the installation of the CPU. So I'm just going to lift the socket up. So I'm now going to go and put the i7 4770K in, making sure that it's lined up correctly. Which it is, as you can see, I've already applied some thermal paste to this, just to make it a little bit easier for myself. Um, so there we go. That's the uh, CPU in place. It's quite a bit of thermal paste on that, actually. Probably more than what I need. But there we go. So that is now in place. So we're now going to bring the ICE unit back in so that we can now reapply that to the socket and the case. Just move that to one side. Okay, so that's the first one that's in place. It's always best to go corner to corner, so just one moment. So once this is in place, all that you need to do then is just basically twist the little knobs and that then secures it as best as possible to the actual socket, etc. It's not going to go anywhere. It's performing quite a good connection to the top of the CPU. Now, it did actually take me quite a while to actually get this installed and get it to line up quite correctly um, it was a bit worrying the first time that I actually pushed one of them through um, because it really did make quite a loud click um, it sort of worried me quite a bit um, but you know essentially it's in there now so that's all in place so the next thing that we're going to do is go and install the RAM so we're going to go and use the red channels and install our first sticker RAM in there Like so, clicking it into place as we go. And that's the second one there in place. So the final thing to do with regards to the main components is to then go and stick the heat sink, etc. 
and fan back into place. So that's that in place there. Stick the fan back in, which goes in like so. So we'll just turn this around, grab the thumb screws, and line up that casing with the fan. One thing to notice that you're not actually um, screwing through the actual heat sink. What you're actually screwing through is the actual metal case uh, that holds the fan to the actual heat sink. Unfortunately, the GPU that I've got, which is this one here from here's the 280X, does not fit inside this case at all. Um, mainly down to sort of the the overall construction of the actual GPU. Um, but as you can see, hopefully it really is not going to fit in the case which is a bit of a shame would have been nice to show you guys the installation from that okay so we're now going to go and install the storage options into the actual system itself uh, using obviously the hard drive uh, caddy that we've got up at the top here unfortunately there's no room for any SSDs to go in here um, even if we were to try and screw them in from one side. So what I'm going to use is the Easy Fit Pro Dual 2.5 inch to 3.5 inch um, SSD bracket from IC Dock. I've done an unboxing and review of this particular product and this is a fantastic example of how it can be used. So we're just going to slide that in and as you can see all that you need to do is then just slide your SSD in, clicks into place and away you go. In addition to that, we're then going to also stick in a 4 terabyte Western Digital Drive into the top section. And as you can see, we've still got room for an optical drive in there if we do want one. So I'm now going to go and screw these all down. Okay, so that's now done. So I'm just going to pop the cage back into place like so. Click it into place, give it a screw down as well, just to make sure that everything is nice, safe and secure. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is to go and install our SATA cables into the actual system itself. So we're just going to go and flick the one on the SSD, making sure I get it the right way around. Just going to go and stick that now into the socket. Like so, I'll just try and keep that out of the way the best that we can just to allow for as much airflow as possible. Okay, so this one's going into the top drive. Like so, and again keeping it out of the way as much as possible. Uh, where are we? We're gonna stick that in there. So we're now gonna go and remove this bundle the cables and we're going to tie that all back up in a moment so we just need to grab out the SSD ch channel so just going to connect these back up try and bundle these up as best as we can okay so we've now got two SATA connectors so we're now going to go and just quickly plug these in as you can see there's really not enough well, not enough, there's really not much room in here, so I'm just going to pull that cable out while I connect this one up. And that's secure. And so is that one there. And away we go. So that's our, our system now set up and complete. Um, also going to tidy up a little bit better, move some cables around a little bit more, just also give me the maximum amount of airflow on the inside for the fan to actually operate. Um, but essentially that's it, so let's fire it up, let's have a look at the BIOS. Okay, so we're now ready for the switch on, so I'm just going to hit the button now. And see, I'll see the hard drive LED lighting up as well as the blue power LED and obviously you would have heard the fan spinning up from inside there um, 
so there's quite a nice amount of airflow coming from the back of the actual fan itself in terms of vibration I can't really feel much I can't really hear much um, I'll see at the moment the lid isn't on the actual case but so far it looks to be pretty good indeed in terms of keeping the noise down let me just bring you in to have a look at the fan so hopefully you can uh, see the fan going around in the background there okay so we're now going to go and have a look at the actual BIOS itself just wait for that to load um, obviously it's not got a graphical user interface pretty basic pretty standard so it mentions that we've got the 4770k in now 16 gigabyte ddr3 ram moving that across to advanced we've then got the power management configuration we can set your suspend mode uh, any wake up function by usb if you wish moving down to the cpu configuration not a great deal that you can do in here to be absolutely honest with you um obviously we've got the ht technology down there all processor cores are enabled um but that in terms of your options down at the bottom there is literally all that you have and to be honest with you i don't think i'd really want to overclock in this particular system moving down to the sata configuration pretty pretty damn simple indeed usb configuration hardware health this is also going to be the interesting bit at the moment we're on, we are also on smart fan mode um you can change it down to ultra low uh, or full mode depending on what you want but it's configured to obviously keep it within a certain temperature and you can see that the fan speed at the moment is running at 1090 ish rpm the cpu temperature of 50 degrees c system temperature of 27 degrees c so what i'm going to do um fan speed control 2 i'm just going to change that down to ultra low mode and we're just going to go and save and exit that then we're just going to let it run for a few moments go back into the BIOS and see if that has made any form of immediate impact so it's now running a little bit slower it's not a great deal slower um, I'm going to stick that on to full mode Let's see what that does and again just go back into the actual BIOS and hopefully you can actually hear the fan kicking in that fan is moving at some speed 3600 rpm that's crazy from that particular fan um, it's very very loud you could probably hear it in the background and the difference of the cpu temperature in idle mode isn't a great deal so to be honest i would probably stick with that on the smart fan mode because that is very loud so we'll wait for the uh, the turbine to uh, slow down go back in and look at the other options uh, so you've got your onboard devices, your onboard LAN uh, your mini PCI connection um, etc Intel rapid start gonna enable that just to make things a little bit quicker frequency and voltage obviously you can change the the uh, DRAM frequency if you wish but we are running 1600 megahertz RAM anyway so we don't need to play around with that in terms of boot you've got your usual um, options in here boot from whatever you want really so that's quite simple and also you've got your usual security as well so what we're going to do now we're going to go and install windows 7 onto the actual system um, and we're going to sort of see how well it actually performs okay so we've now got windows 7 actually installed into the system um, by default obviously the drivers are not going to be there i've actually um, what i've done is removed the hard drive that's in there um, and connected a, a cd drive for the moment just so that we can go and install the actual drivers because as you can see We've got a number of them that are missing now what i wanted to do is just basically show you the actual interface from the actual software itself so we're just going to close that down and wait for that to come back up because so i think this is actually quite good it's very simple very easy to to actually go about doing what you need to do and what we're going to do is just click on the auto install drive utility obviously you can go down and select the various different ones that you want and then it comes up the chipset 
the ME driver, the RST driver, the VGA, audio LAN and USB 3 as well. So we're just going to go and click and install them all. Okay, so now that we've got Windows installed on the system, I'm just going to give you a bit of a sort of demonstration as to how quick the system starts. Now obviously, depending on what system you have will depend obviously on how fast it actually goes. So I'm about to hit the power button, hopefully you'll hear the fan speed up from the shuttle unit. As you can see, we've got the BIOS on the screen, or the post report, I should say. Giving us all the relevant bits and pieces. So we're now going in to start up Windows 7. And we are on the desktop top. So it's very, very quick in terms of its speed when starting up. Okay, so there we have it. That's our install video for the Shuttle XPC Barebone SZ87R6. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get a great deal of time with the actual system. We would have liked to have actually done um, some more gaming, um, run some more tests with it. Obviously, pushed it a little bit further than what we did uh, doing the install. I did manage to, to get a little bit of game time in before um, I had to send it back. And it wasn't too bad. Um, it wasn't too bad at all. I, I, I would obviously recommend putting in an aftermarket graphics card into it. Um, the cooling is satisfactory. I wouldn't push it too far though if it was myself. But apart from that, it's a very nice looking system. It wasn't too difficult to have actually get everything installed. And the fact that it obviously is a bare bones system, you are able to go and chuck whatever components you want on the inside, does make it quite an attractive option. So I'd like to know what you think about the uh, the video that we that you've just watched. Please leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think about our, our sort of uh, install guide here as such. And we look forward to seeing you in our next video. We hoped you liked our video review. If you did, then please leave a like as well as any comments or questions you may have down below. Full details and specifications on this item can be found at our website, nismotech.com, along with all the links for purchasing if you wish. Also on our site, you'll find our latest reviews and current giveaways, plus a lot more. We look forward to seeing you in our next review.